Welcome back to Whatever We Want, a podcast about celebrating storytelling. We are not talking about movies and TV shows again this week because of the ongoing writers and actors strike. Uh, mm-hmm. So instead, we are talking about some video game stories. Uh, talking yeah. about your specialty, Daniel. Some BR stories. BR. Yeah. yeah talk about so- what makes good BR story and game. Yeah. yeah. How you doing? Yeah. You ready? For this? You're pretty good. Yeah. I was, I was like waiting for that because I was like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I just kept going. But I just never yeah. let you talk this episode. I just keep speaking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, dude, I'm doing good. How about you? You're just like auditing the class. <laughs> you're just auditing me talk for an hour. <laughs> That's something you're like, way more qualified yes. to talk about. <laughs> yes. Hmm. All right. But yeah, well, so actually, you go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's VR, dude. I think it's something that's very important moving forward with storytelling in general, because, like, it's been booming a lot in the last couple of years, and I think it's obviously, like, the industry I'm in. Yeah. But Or, like, the niche industry, I guess you could say. Because I'm in gaming, but like or game design, but, like, VR, like, it brings not only a whole new set of problems on a technical scale for people to solve, but also brings a whole plethora of, of opportunities. Tools, yeah, new ways to tell for stories. storytelling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of had like an observation that I wanted to ask if you think is accurate or if I'm not. Like when you brought up this topic, I, I had this thought. I was like, I wonder if he agrees with this or not. I feel like the first like age of mainstream, the first chapter of mainstream VR was really about highlighting the technology and like the the the, the practice of VR. Like it was about like, okay, this game you can like move around. It's just about like the technology aspect of it and like oh it's this new thing like beat saber was big like there's not really a story to my knowledge of like beat saber and like super hot that one had a little bit of a story but it wasn't super like anything like super fleshed out super yeah. hot super fleshed out um <laughs> I, I i wondering if now we're getting to a point where like vr we're past that initial like excitement phase i know it's not still super mainstream like not everyone has a vr headset but i i think for me i'm predicting the future of vr games what's going to stand out is excellent storytelling. And that's going to be the next chapter after the just getting over the hype. Okay. So you think that too? Agreed. I do agree with that, but that's also, there's, there's two parts to that. Like a lot of, a lot of what you're saying there, it's weird because you're, you're viewing it from like a storytelling perspective where I've always viewed it kind of like as a, it's a discovery of the technology, right? Like what can be done, what can't be done Uh uh, and what should be done versus what shouldn't be done. I mean, I know you, uh, for example, and Ev- really Evan get motion sickness, right? So it's like there's literal physical restrictions, yeah, limits to what you're able to do for when it comes to certain capabilities of this hardware, right? So it's really the first couple of years, like with Beat Saber and, and again the games uh-huh. like Super Hot and stuff like that. It's like, hey, what kind of mechanics can we add to give players a sense of control and sensibility of like how they're interacting with the world and environment? But uh-huh. at the same time, make sure that they literally don't get sick and hurl while doing right. it. That's a, yeah, that, I guess that's a huge hurdle to get over compared to like previous games that you didn't really have to think about as much. I mean, I'm sure, I mean, I know there's still some motion sickness in other games that some people can't play and something they had to consider. But yeah, yeah. This is, since this is like a whole new frontier that's like to that, to another level, which just makes it even more difficult to like make good games and tell good stories because you have that additional hurdle to get over yeah. while you're fighting this new technology that. It hasn't been tested yet so that it's exciting but also yeah interesting and challenging yeah so the first couple of years of that of like mainstream vr in my mind was always like there's different studios searching up how to do different approaches to solve these kinds of uh physical and technical problems like that right okay you kind of had to do that before you can even get into good storytelling because imagine imagine right. if you're trying to write a like really compelling story but you can't like but- walk you can't walk, and like every step you took made you feel like you're gonna hurl. Like you, like literally, Beat like Saber wouldn't... walked so Rune Waker <laughs> could run. <laughs> exactly, but no, no, like it's 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 literally funny. Like like there's then also different philosophies that then come into it then, right? Because there's there's certain points you have to ask yourself as a developer, right? Like what am I willing to compromise with? Because uh, there's some cases where like, like for example, I'm thinking like Bone Works at Bone Lab, right? Like they wanted to have full on physics, full on locomotion stuff like that, and uh-huh. they knew that would make people motion sickness. Or make, uh, make them motion sick, right? Okay, make them motion sickness. You yeah, become I said that very motion sick. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I or, am I was thinking give them motion sickness and I said make them, but anywho. Uh, yeah. But they decided to go that route anyway because they had a goal in mind of how they wanted to provide a... Again, their philosophy was like, hey, we want to provide a full physics as immersive and as real- realistic as we possibly can. 
uh, uh, mechanically. Right. So they focused on that. And at that too, even with games like that too, like with Super Hot and Bone Works and and uh, a lot of other games, I feel uh-huh. like there is story there. Actually, I know there is story there. I know for Super but it's Hot, like you said like, too. They're like, like kind of, it feels like secondary to like the the mechanics. The, the, the mechanics is like the the draw, like the marketing to it. Like I, I think, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. And I think like the next phase, I think eventually the mechanics are going to lose their like initial excitement and appeal, and it's still going to be a selling point. But I think to stand out, studios are going to have to highlight the storytelling after a certain point because i think that's honestly what excites humans and and humanity I, is connecting with stories i disagree with that i do think that the story telling, i agree with you with that storytelling is going to be pushing the games further in vr uh-huh but i feel like if there's going to be lack of days go with mechanics and it's not going to go well no 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 yeah no i'm not i'm saying the mechanics have to just be a given after a certain point like it i'm not i'm not saying like they're going to forget everything. And if they tell like a decent story, like if you're just sitting in VR reading a story, that's going to be exciting. No, 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 I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying like after a certain point, the mechanics alone are going to just have to be a given and aren't going to be the main draw. I think it's going to be what stands it out as a story and also maybe how to, instead of just doing these base VR mechanics, what new creative thing can you do in the mechanics? They'll be working in tandem. That, that's what I'm saying. It, I think storytelling exactly. is going to get that, more important. That's how, I, that's how I view it. There, there needs to be a magical balance between like the mechanics and the storytelling. And yeah, and it's I'm even saying better in the past it's been get, like, mechanics than storytelling, yeah. and I think they're gonna storytelling is gonna have to rise to mechanics at some point, and I think that's where we're shifting. Okay, yeah, to. That, that I agree with. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying forget about mechanics at all. It sounds like you're saying like how you like no, no, no. do this, but like this. No, I think I get. it has to yeah. rise. Yeah, yeah. For for audio listeners, we just did different arm level rising. Yeah, we're actions. saying <laughs> I, I think we just like, like mechanics are up as the highlight right now and storytelling is kind of secondary and I think they're both going to have to rise to that same level the mechanics is already at and both yeah. be good to stand out once competition increases, once the technology is more readily available and gets more popular in yeah. this next chapter. Um, so going back to just storytelling with VR, like what do you think makes a good story in VR or, or like, what do you predict is going to make it things stand to, out in the future? It's an extension of what makes good storytelling in just regular games, but even more so. And what I mean by that is the really good storytelling games are the ones that are immersive in a sense that you can feel related to the character and the, the world that they're in. If uh-huh. you can nail that, then you're solid. And the thing is, nailing that in VR takes a lot more effort and a lot more time than it does for a traditional game. How come? Because you need to make sure that you're literally in the shoes of the character. If I was just going to like make a world and then just have you like walk around it, compared to like having that character actually physically like interact with the world, be able to like destroy things, interact with things, search for different items, interact and talk to different characters, like you're the one literally doing that. Right, as compared to like you just walking up and like do, doing like a pressing like, A or something. Pressing yeah, exactly. Uh huh. So and that works for like other like I'm thinking of like storytelling games like from Naughty Dog like Uncharted or Last of Us, right? Like those are very peak, uh, story driven games, uh-huh. right? And their their whole identities are based around again our protagonist, obviously, but also the worlds that they're in. Whenever you're Nathan Drake, you're not just Nathan Drake in a grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> him like like on a, some world crazy adventure where he's like going out and discovering something new and there's like some kind of mystic element but then you have to like question yourself like is, is it really mystic or is it like some kind of like science fluke or play that's going on there like it's how the world is pushing the characters into the, whatever path they're taking that's right. the key to making vr stories even better so you don't do you do not think on that note that stories that are like maybe in a simpler world like i'm thinking like something like you know all those like simulators where it's like power washing simulator or even like something like the stanley parable when it's just like in an office building do you think that wouldn't do as well in vr like it has to be a no, strong environment okay. you just drew up two big different ranges of that because the same like no, is like, all about story but like <laughs> yeah no i know that's why i brought it up so we can talk about both but like so no you, like, you don't well, think i'm just talking about because again, like, I'm imagining sim. something like like power washing sim, right? Because there could be a story there, but like again, the heart of that is the mechanics. So if you wanted right. to add a story there, 
I, you, you, you could, but then it needs to be written properly. You're a struggling power washer, uh, company entrepreneur trying to get your feet off the ground, but suddenly big power washing company comes in. It takes all your clients. Oh, I was going to make it like a murder mystery. Like you get like a shipment to come in one day, like, oh, we need to press wash our car or something like that. But in actuality, oh. you find like a dead body or like leg or whatever in the and car. And they're asking like, you to clean it up, but you're like, yeah, no. you're like, so uh, you have to like I take do? a picture and you like become this detective. And yeah. you have to clean up the streets. You have to clean oh, up the, the yeah! puns, Daniel. <laughs> we should make power washing sim the murder mystery <laughs> VR. <laughs> that would be oh my gosh. freaking dope, dude. But yeah, but like you see what I mean? Like you can add a story to that and like have it be immersive, like you literally going through and like like funnily enough, like actually cleaning up the streets. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> but it's that, like that a, then needs know, to be with the mechanic, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. You know how it's like uh, there's those games where it's like you can choose to go down the good path or a bad path. I feel like that we could have a metric of that where it's like the amount you clean. Like if you just walk past like some gum on the street and you don't clean it up, you like your reputation goes down or something. <laughs> you seeing you see, there's like someone getting mugged in an alley and you like have the option to like pressure wash them off the person <laughs> or like actually no, I'm just going to walk away. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, no. you need, and you have to also to consider like how much water you have. So you have to save your water for certain. Oh, so if dang. you wash that gum, then you can't save the people in the alley later. So it's like, <laughs> oh my, the moral quandaries, Daniel. <laughs> that would be so tragic. You just walk, you're like, I'm out of water. I can't do anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't help you. I uh, picked up some gum. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang, I want to like develop this <laughs> pressure washing <laughs> game now. And that, dude, that's what I love about VR, man. Like, you, like that's the thing. Like, when you imagine yourself in a story like that, you are literally freaking doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm, ju I'm just picturing me, like, with my VR, like, pressure washing setup, like, ch -ch -ch time to <laughs> clean up the street. I don't know. Some other fun. I've used that one Your roommate walks in while you're in your headset and, like, oh, uh, what, what's he doing? Like, <laughs> look over at your monitor screen and there's just gum being washed away. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Oh. Yeah? Well, I was going to go off with your other analogy with Stanley Purple. Okay, yeah. Because, like, the, that's the thing with Stanley Parable is, like, that's also meant to be, like, very, like, you, you are Stanley, Can you explain right? so the like, premise of Stanley Parable for anyone that doesn't know? Okay, so the Stanley Parable is, like, a paradoxical game to where you are an office worker named Stanley. And you're able to actually go through this office space and make different choices. But along the way, you have a narrator that's, like, telling you what to do, right? And you can so choose you can whether or not to listen to him or to not. To not listen to him. or It's a really good game. And there's so many different endings and outcomes. Uh, because there's, like, different ones based... Like, it'll branch off based on what different... Like, you could choose to go left here and then uh, right in the future. And, like... It's compared to, like, two lefts and two rights. and It's just, it's yeah. just crazy. It's, like... So... And there's so many little memes and Easter eggs. Two wrongs um, still make it right, but three lefts do. Oh, ho, yeah. they thought about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was so my favorite it, it's, line it's from funny how that works out. The Fairly Odd Parents when I was a kid. When I heard that, I like blew my mind. I was like, it does. Because if you <laughs> like, turn left does. three times, you're facing right. <laughs> it's like the cars uh, thing. Like sometimes to turn left, you got to turn right or whatever it is. Like that also blew my mind. I feel like I was just directly challenged as a you're kid, very... I guess. Now that I'm figuring this out. But like, just you're like this all mind. makes like, sense. Wow. I could see it. It's like, I, I could see, see you watching as a kid. And then you're like, you're literally like, what? Yeah. Oh, oh my god <laughs> yeah it works but yeah but sorry the stanley parable yeah but the reason why i think something like that would work very well in vr is because the mechanics for that are also super simple you're just walking around yeah you're just walking around and like at one point you pick up a bucket i think that's pretty much it oh <laughs> but like but like the the whole premise of that is again it's stanley going through this experience and that's the whole point like it's it's meant to immerse you as stanley going through and this. you feel like you'd be like more immersed because you're like actually in vr walking experiencing it looking around at the options you can take yeah exactly okay so you think so, that would do well in like a vr oh definitely game well, that's, okay. that's the thing i it doesn't need to be a vr game doesn't need to be heavy mechanics but if you are going to go with the story your mechanics need to work with that story. Okay. If you do too much in one way or the other, I mean, if you have more mechanics, that's fine, because then you just have a mechanic. Again, like Beat Saber, like that's the focus of that game, right? Dude, imagine Stanley Parable, but you could also just like whip out a lightsaber and like, <laughs> just added that mechanic. <laughs> but so you're saying the mechanics, you'd rather have more versus the story you'd rather have more? No, no. What I'm saying is, is if you have a story that doesn't have the mechanics to support it, you're not going to have a good game. Right. Are there any examples of that that you've played or can think of? 
where that uh, has happened? I would say, honestly, kind of recently with us, uh, f- Bread and Fred a little bit. And here's why I'm saying this, right? Because there is a story So there. Bread and Fred is... Uh, it's more mechanics-driven. It's like yeah. a, it's a game where you're two penguins um, together, tethered like to each other, together, and able to like swing each other and like pull and like each fling other each other like up. Yeah, it's like you you're higher. trying to get as high as possible. So and I'm not the, talking the f- about elevation. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Dude, like, that'd like be crazy. If that mechanic was Dude, in it. Red Fred be... just whip out <laughs> blood. <laughs> like, oh, no, because like, you know how it's like really cold on top, so they're just like, oh my god, let me like right, time to numb myself. You know, time to. Loosen up a little bit. Mm. I'm about to go to a fishing Elon competition. Need to get, get up my appetite. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but you were so. What are you? What are you saying? What's your point with? Because there's more elements to the story that we didn't really get into, right? Because okay. like, for example, you could like bring things to different characters and all that stuff. But at that point, the mechanics were, I would we say, were, like, challenging done to a point that we didn't care to do it. Okay, so you're saying it was too. Like there weren't enough, there weren't enough mechanics. Or like the mechanics weren't up to the standard that the story. The mechanics was trying didn't support to be. the story. If you're somebody who wanted to go through and that, pay, which is again the, the the reason why that's okay with Brett and Fred here is because the focus was on the mechanics. The story right. was just there to also be there. But my point here is with this is that if you're somebody who's story driven and you want to uh-huh. play a game for the story, you wouldn't like Brett and Fred because of the mechanics being uh, more challenging. Uh, a, like it disables you from getting the full story experience unless you're willing to go through because the you're mechanics. so focused on just learning the mechanics and and yeah g- develop like progressing that way yeah okay that makes gotcha. sense interesting yeah i think so yeah what do you look for when you're like scrolling through vr games like what makes things stand out to you that you look for for, for me what sticks out to me is story driven games but they also have to have a cool style and cool mechanics. I feel like there's also a lot of variability with style you're able to have. So it's the merriment, the marrying of those two. Yeah. I think that's the, kind of the lesson of this is like the the mechanics and the storytelling are what have to be working well, synergizing together. Yeah. Like the cl- like in the Incredibles. Wait, I can't. Wait, we shouldn't talk about projects that are not out right because it's strike. a movie that's that's been done forever now, Jake. I know that's but you're fine. not supposed to. It's what all the little cogs mesh together that thing <laughs> okay okay anyways but yeah so you look for yeah. stories and mechanics what like but like it needs to be yeah. it needs to be like for example like there's games that i don't play because the mechanics are like too straining like i don't do gorilla attack because that's just like what I is that throw myself gorilla tags are like a game where you're a gorilla and you just to walk around or really throw around you throw yourself around with your hands oh wow yeah it's very freaking draining dude and i don't that seems don't taxing like that. it is taxing and I'm an older man now. Maybe that's also part of something you have to consider. <laughs> the demographic you're like playing to is uh, like gamers that are maybe not the most physically capable or like wanting to be the most physically capable. I wonder if there's gonna be like a Wii Sports for Connect or for VR, not Connect. Is man, there anything like, like that? There, I mean, you already have things like mini golf and other things like that, like in like VR Chat, and, and I'm pretty sure there are other games like that. I do have a game I'm working on, Jake, so if we start to get too close to it, I might have to cut you off. I'm just saying. There's a little side project I've been just Oh, you're doing on. a side project? Yeah. It's only going to take me like a couple weeks. It's a super... Compared to Ruin Waker, dude, the uh, the code for what I'm planning on doing, super simple. Super simple. Wait, do you not want to talk about it, or can you not tell me about it? I, I mean, I could tell you, but I'll tell you after the podcast. <laughs> oh, okay. You don't want it said to the world? <laughs> not yet. No, because here's to the thing, right? I don't have anything listeners? made yet. If I had more stuff made then, oh, okay. I'd be like, okay, now now I have a little bit of a buffer. So this is building hype. Daniel, you're being very smart here. I see what you're doing. Yeah, you're yeah, building yeah. a story around this game, this secret yeah. game, like the murder mystery. We have to solve <laughs> what this game is. We're going to wash away the paint so we can see what it is, Daniel. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I just forgot exactly what, what we were talking about. Uh, well, no, you're asking me, like, what do I look for? And I yeah. guess it kind of brings up, I can reverse that on you because you don't really do VR that much. So if you did do VR, right. what would you look for? I think I look for, I am still in a place where I really like the mechanic of it. Because I feel like I, if I'm going to play a story-driven game, I really like to just play a good story-driven game on my computer. So I can, I'm like kind of comfortable and I also don't have like VR readily accessible. But I do get excited about those games like Beat Saber and Super Hot that are more like high-energy 
and like forces you to move because it's a fun mechanic i think because yeah. I, I feel like Beat Saber would suck, like, in, like, a normal whatever, like, normal gaming. Like, if I was just flinging my mouse around to hit things or, like, pressing keys on a keyboard, <laughs> that would not be nearly as fun as, like, actually whipping controllers around and stuff. Um, so I, I think I look for mechanics that are different than... They're unique. That are unique to VR yeah. that you can't really do in just regular gaming. Like, I feel like... For me, if you just took Skyrim and I was given the option of VR versus normal, just playing on my PC mm-hmm. or Xbox or something, I don't know if I would choose VR if it was a one-to-one comparison. If there was something different, like if I did some crazy move and that was like my Fusro Da, if I had to like do that, or like I could like ride the dragon or some something different, I think that would be different. It was at, if it was adding something, but if it was just a one-to-one, I think again because of that whole motion sickness and also just it's a hassle for me to set up. Like I wouldn't yeah. do that. And that again, that talks sense. about the range of VR users too. Like for me, if I had to do the twist again, I honestly probably would do Skyrim VR. Cause I'd mod the shit out of that to make it look like mm-hmm. pretty as hell. And then, uh, dude, it would be like cool actually be, like, going around that Skyrim. World, like, yeah, yeah. Like that's what I'm saying. Like, that I mean, you said cool. yourself like flying and dra- dude doing the horse riding up a mountain. <laughs> oh my gosh, that'd be awesome! <laughs> like I'm just like this. That'd be terrifying, like, actually. Like, like leaning, like looking up practically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be good. Maybe I would do that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> dude, imagine being on a, a horse with a pressure washer just <laughs> drive by. <laughs> pressure washing drive by but no like even things like like the stealth mechanics like that too i feel like would add so that much would be cool it. yeah you know like maybe, actually maybe sneaking around it. and then yeah, yeah. dude I, I remember my favorite piece of armor from that was the ebony mail because i could cloak you so like it's called ebony it. mail yeah so there's the ebony armor set it's an right? ebony mall like a character from marvel that seems really close to each other that's interesting i don't know, I don't know but why that's just... ebony mail like like chain mail but it's not chain mail it's ebony armor and like okay if you, if you you know like you know in skyrim if you squat it down like you would be like hidden or whatever yeah it would cloak you like you'd oh, be wow. like in shadow yeah so it wasn't the highest highest from sonic armor but it was like no <laughs> 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 but it was like it was really helped you with uh self buff <laughs> Just imagine playing Sonic in VR and you go into the spin and your Spins? camera's just freaking going <laughs> dude, crazy. Dude, that reminds me of the time we were at the track. We put me in the tire and we rolled. Oh my gosh, that would be what that was. That would be the closest comparison to what I could think of. Is you're just in a tire, <laughs> just propel like falling at massive speeds downhill. So maybe uh, Sonic wouldn't be the best game mechanic wise no, to it, convert it to not. VR. Oh my That'd be God. funny. But yeah. But no, like I think it's it's not only story stylization too. I feel like if there's a game with a cool style, I'm also yeah. really drawn to that as well. I mean, just in general, but with VR, it takes things to a whole different level. Like it's one of the reasons yeah. why with with Rune Waker, why I wanted to have more of a like Ratchet and Clanky stylized feel, so that way it felt like it was something new for people to like get into and and uh, go around and explore. It's right. like being like trying to get like hyper realistic or right or uh, do like the low poly style that you see in other VR games. I think also just those like stylized games age a lot better than games that try to be hyper realistic because the technology is constantly evolving and changing like year after year. Like I like The Force Unleashed was like supposedly a hyper realistic game and in 2008 I thought it was super hyper realistic cuz like the grass mm-hmm. like flowed in the wind. That was one thing that stood out to me. And I am we're going back and playing that now and it is crap. Like it, it <laughs> the graphics <laughs> Like, do not hold up compared to, like, hyper-realistic, like, Battlefield or something that's yeah. more recent. Um, and then just which wait is fine. Another, it's another a project five, of its years, time. Dude. Yeah, I know. But, like, I'm just saying, I, I really like, I think these kind of tune-shaded or even, like, stylized games like a Spyro definitely mm-hmm. don't age 100% perfectly. Like, you can tell, like, there's slightly less poly count and stuff. But it's, it's like, a product of its time in, like, a enjoyable more nostalgic way versus oh this looks bad kind of thing yeah yeah so i i just i i gravitate more towards stylized games if i'm playing older games versus and, and like the lego star wars games they the graphics have greatly improved on the latest one but yeah. the old ones are still very good because they're supposed to look like plastic rough on the edges lego blocks so it the yeah technology they had at the time worked fine for that so I, that's just that's kind of a different discussion of graphics um, and preferences in games, but 
interesting yeah. to talk about. I mean, that was a big thing that people need to also like remember too when it comes to VR because you're still working with only a mobile processor in some cases right. compared to like having a full PC. So that's true. that was a big thing that I feel like turned a lot of people down starting off because they're like, oh, why would I go play the graphics VR? Is good. When, yeah, when like I can get a game that has better graphics on my PC. Right. But like that's not the point of it. And that's something that I, that I feel like early on was just a bias that a lot of people like stupidly had because they weren't yeah. thinking about like the experience as compared to the visuals, uh, the visuals. Yeah. Yeah. Which is definitely like they're not because they're not claiming to be better visually. Like they're claiming that the visuals are getting better compared to old VR headsets, but they're not claiming like this is going to compete with like your GTX 50 million whatever. <laughs> Graphics card. You can tell I know a lot about graphics cards. <laughs> yeah, you, you tried there. It's all right. <laughs> is it GTX one? GTX like you, you, okay. Thirty eighty. You have a GTX. Yeah, you have GTX. I have RTX. So Nvidia's main line is GTX, but now they've went over to RTX for ray. Tra- it's for ray tracing, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, See, yeah. I got the abbreviation and one of the numbers correct. Let me ask you this: If there was like for yours, right, which is a ten eighty Ti, what does the Ti stand for? Uh. Terminator infested. No. <laughs> uh, titanium. Termite infested. It's titanium. Yeah, it's just meant to be like, hey, this is like a higher end card. Cool. Is it made of titanium? No. What the heck? It lied <laughs> to me. We're washing away the lies of the corporate America. <laughs> <Psh>. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's graphic card information for you. <laughs> but yeah, no, dude, that's one of the reasons why I was excited about like the superconductor thing, though. That was from China. That turned out to be fucking fake because like oh really yeah because you know what that would mean right if we did find a room temperature superconductor like that you could put that into like headsets you could put that into all kinds of computers oh like jake like why do you why do you have a problem with your heating because of the fans <laughs> or well, because that, like my it's too hot in the, and i put it in the corner of my room stupidly and why why is your computer generating heat because it's my computer and i'm hot no <laughs> Because you're because the electrical output right is it's losing so much energy th- from heat. It's just not efficient. Mm. It's not efficient. I mean, it's, oh, it's efficient so as we can't get it. Efficient. Yes, because that means you would have a minimal loss of data and le- le- you know also of heat, like if losing energy through heat. Like you could then have hell modern day cooling solutions and push uh, processors even farther, like way farther. If you had a, a superconductor like that. You know what else is cool? The water from our water pressing game. <laughs> <laughs> I just spritz spray annihilate my computer with a power washer. <laughs> oh my god! But I'm the reason why I bring that. that up is because if we had something like that, then you'd it have eliminate that have, problem. Yeah, you that wouldn't be a problem with Quest or like mobile processors. Interesting. So. Yeah, the graphics I mean have gotten better since the inception of VR. Oh, um, definitely. And it's continuing to get better i feel like it's kind of like with your phone like it's just going to keep getting better year after year model after mm-hmm. model yeah what i'm excited about is uh i'm looking into this new headset called a big screen beyond okay which is like this kind of headset that people have been going crazy about it's super small it's like like uh I super think it weighs small less than like a mouse super you know wow if not like yeah no it's 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 and they like get a 3d scan of your face so that way like it, when they do the face play, it'll, like match up to you what if your face um, like changes? Like, what if you gain a lot of weight or like get liposuction or something <laughs> like a week later? Well, then you got to get a new thing. But that's the thing; they'll send you the three D model of that, and then you can like reprint your things as well. So oh, you okay. If you wanted to, so it's like um, interchangeable. Okay. Yeah. Well, for that's um, kind of yeah, it's a little bit of work based off the models that they have now. But yeah. Um, but it's better graphics. But that's the thing. Uh, well, no, it's a PC VR headset. But the big thing with that one is super small form factor. And this talks about it coming out with a wireless mode, which means you'd be able to have wireless to your PC, so you would technically, yeah, have better graphics, but have it be like oh, a like, it's like a Bluetooth light headset. thing, yeah. kind of. Okay, It'll be like over Wi-Fi, but yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, interesting. Yeah, but yeah. Cool. So it's it's just cool to see the different kind of technology solutions that are coming forward with that. But we're kind of getting off a tangent with with uh, storytelling and VR. Yeah. What are some of your favorite games that incorporate good storytelling with? VR right now. Uh, Besides right Rune now, Waker, of course. Yeah, I was gonna say, dude, Rune Waker, come on. I am excited, no. dude. Like, I, you, there was a call. Like, I, I'm not even saying this just like for because we're friends, but like, it's genuinely like 
a good story. Like you told me the the like outline of the story like months ago, like when you were first developing it, like probably almost like a year, year and a half ago. Yeah. And I was like, dude, this is like an exciting story. It's like a world that like I was excited to be able to explore when it was done. Like it's very exciting. So it's cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I actually, it's funny as I was going through my game design document, I was actually going through and like adding in more details about some of the characters because there's some characters like I knew like their motives and stuff, but I didn't really know like why they had those motives. So uh-huh. I kind of like wrote about them a little bit more, kind of like the uh, yeah. like the grand headmaster of arches. Like, why is he trying to get like these powerful relics and all that kind of stuff? And like, uh-huh. what's his relationship with his son, the commander? And, okay, uh, like stuff like that. I, I built out a little bit more, so you might like that. Yeah, it's cool to flesh that stuff out that you're thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. I liked the world building. I know we had like some calls where we were talking about like uh, certain worlds. Like, I think we talked, we like were brainstorming about like. I don't want to give away too much, but we were, I don't know how much you're keeping, but we brainstormed. My favorite was like, we were talking about this planet that had like different colored sand and like, yeah. there, were, there could have been like different factions within the different colored sands, like dunes. Cause like on earth. Dune three. Yeah. I mean, on earth there's like <laughs> pink sand, there's like white sand dunes, there's like black mm-hmm. sand in Hawaii. So like, I was just thinking like, what if there was a planet that was just all that, but like different environments that create these different sections of colored sand and, and then there's these warring factions so i don't know it's funny because cool. now now thinking back about that you know what that makes me think about what bionicle really <laughs> yeah why because technically because like that's it wasn't just about sand but it was like the different colors are based off of like different factions from different oh. like, groups and stuff like that so it's kind of funny okay but uh but sorry you, i went yeah. off track what, what are your like some games you're excited about like stories yeah no i i like uh stormlands uh i i, I honestly have it it's also funny enough uh one of uh insomniac's introductory vr games oh really so they, they just know how to do stories yeah but yeah uh what is it about so you are a well you like you're playing as like an ai robot uh that was a botanist that was like <laughs> reviving this botanist <laughs> 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 but like you're sent on this mission to this planet to kind of like revitalize it, but then there's like this enemy faction that like comes in, like destroys everything in the Stormlands. So like you're able to like f- like glide around, uh, uh, glide around and float and like explore different areas and stuff like that. And you kind of have to like rediscover like, hey, how did everything like collapse and all that stuff? Yeah. Um, I still haven't played all the way through it. I've just been way too busy. But uh, I I love that one. Um, that's cool. And Tenet, I was reading more into Boneworks and, like, the lore with that. Because uh, that had, like, Boneworks is, like, the physically most, like, dynamic VR right. game. Right. And that was kind of the selling point. With Bone Lab being the, the, the sequel, but, like, honestly, it's not being received as well. But they actually have a story behind it? Yeah, so that's the thing. There is a story behind it, and it, it's actually really crazy and in-depth. Uh, okay. I, I could talk about that probably for a while, but... Well, what, just, just, like, a highlight of it, yeah. Yeah, it, it's pretty much... Uh, trying to solve immortality with VR. Whoa! And Whoa, then that's kind of meta. That's cool. Yeah, and then and then there's <laughs> meta. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it's that. But also with you have these supernatural entities that you have to be careful of from the void because you're dealing with like all this. It's not like supernatural, but kind of is like supernatural like tech stuff with the VR space and like tra- figure out like what consciousness is and like how do you like transfer it over and all that and then like uh-huh. there's this there's these different corporations that allow the technology to happen and then like you play a protagonist in the first one Arthur Ford as a security advisor and then you're like you figure out that he, he like he figures it out that he could become immortal like that so then he's like okay I'm gonna go do that and then that's kind of like the first games like you're kind of good cool. first games are like, really like going through and like uh, you're just going through this world that's like stopped in time as you're trying to go reset it so you can get yourself to be like oh, fully okay. in VR. Cool. It's it's weird. It's really it's really cool. It's it's funny too because it has a lot of inspirations I've I, uh, from like Sword Art Online, which I just finished season four of, uh, which is an anime all about VR. There's so much like more in VR that I just I'm so outside that world. Like I didn't know there was like an anime about. V- I know I knew one you told me, but like yeah. before that, like I didn't know like. I feel like me and a lot of the general population don't view VR as developed as it actually is right now because it's not mainstream or, like, talked about too much. And it's cool seeing, like, I know you're very connected yeah. in the world and in the space. Like, it, it's definitely farther along than I think a lot of people give credit for. And I think also, like, big companies are catching up. Like, the fact that we have, like, talks oh, about the metaverse and, like, meta 
with Facebook and everything like that kind of just proves like this is the way of the future, at least what a lot of people are predicting. Oh yeah, dude, especially if we get to the levels that we see in sort of online and like in other uh, ideologies to where you're able to, like imagine when we get to the point where we're able to combine VR with like Neuralink to where you can have like a literal like full dive. Oh my gosh. So it's like, that, that'd be crazy. That's also dude, a little I have, scary. I, I mean, all change is scary, but. And I have ideas about like how you would do that. And I'm like, okay, well you need to have to do that. How do you visually process that? Like all that. And it's like, because you can't just use regular objects. You'd have to use some kind of like AI imaging software based off of like, we're already having things where, like, what was it? There's that one test where, like, somebody, like, was shown an image, and then they, like, image was taken away, and then they're asked to, like, imagine the image, and then they had an AI, like, Whoa. recreate the image based off the Really? Reviews. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So you'd need to have something like that, but inversed to where you'd be able to have that then brainwave sent to the brain right. to then formalize that image for it as you're in, like, a full dive. So, That's but we're crazy. getting that. Is my point. That's like, yeah. So, dang. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely some interesting stories that you can tell about that. Yeah, VR itself, which I think is interesting. Like, VR is so new, but also just the new moral and ethic like questions we're gonna have to face as a society as we move forward is something that needs to be discussed. Like in real life, but also would be interesting to explore in, like, a game situation where you can, like, predict, like, worst case scenario, this happens. Like, what would that look like and how that would uh, play out. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't know, I think it's really interesting and it's cool. I do, too. That's why I do this. <laughs> yeah. Any woo. Any woo What did you just say? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, dude. My brain what? is... I just thought that... Did you hear the <laughs> voice actor for Mario just retired? Yes, I did. That was he freaking also, He did sad. Wario. He did, like, yep. all the main four. He did Mario, yeah. Luigi, Wario, and... Uh, what's his Peach. face? Yep. <laughs> Waluigi. Yeah, that'd be crazy if he did Peach. I, like, I wonder how much he was getting paid. I hope it was, like, a substantial amount. Oh, he's... No, he's he's good. But also, like, who's going to take over for that? I mean, I feel like a lot of people do impersonations. So Chris hope... Pratt. Please, no. Please, <laughs> no. I will literally delete everything Nintendo from my life if that happens. Again, man, no. I've never really been much of a Nintendo guy. doesn't really... Like, Dude, I'm Super to see Mario go. Galaxy. But Wii like, Sports Resort. Ugh. Like, that was good. Wii Sports. But, like, uh. Mario Kart Wii. That was, like, my main, main thing. I know, dude. That's so good. Like the, what did I play when I had my DS? What Nintendo game would make the best VR That's what I'm thinking of right now. It's like, I still think Wii Sports would be good, but I feel like it'd be too similar to just regular Wii Sports because you're already, like, doing the motions. The only change would be instead of looking at the TV, you'd have the headset on. And, like, you're still kind of, like, yeah. locked to a position because, like, in tennis, you're locked to, like, the line that you're on. So I feel like the VR-ness wouldn't really add too much besides you can look at the, like low poly me's in the stands next to you i guess oh that'd be kind of fun you can see like all the like crazy yeah. me's you made like really close up or like when you're know. boxing I, yeah I no that would, i feel like it would honestly be really good the the resort one too like we're able to go around fly to planes and like like do like this sort of thing or like go on the bike the next time i get you know like star wars squadrons it's just like which is a game where you just that's in, like tie fighters until, like, i don't know the I story that about one. that one too much i didn't really get too far in it but it's actually yeah, pretty good I feel like for me still, like the mechanics, because I don't play it a lot, the mechanic is the biggest hurdle for me to get past. And I have to get adjusted to that before I even start thinking about the story. I'm like, oh, I'm in VR. I have to do all this. Like, I'm just so focused on that that the story is like so secondary to me. I think once myself and the public catches up, we'll be like you, where we're like, okay, I'm so used to the mechanics of VR. Now I'm looking at the story. I think the mechanics are like a hurdle and like first step that people need to get past yeah. to look at the stories. No, it um, is. It definitely is. Yeah. But yeah, Squadrons is a good example of that because I like didn't even know there was a story. I just kind of played like for maybe half an hour with you and just was getting used to the mechanics. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think the reason I know Superhot's story loosely, like you're putting on the headset and jumping into this mm -hmm. game to like fight this evil, is because I've I liked Superhot mechanics enough that I played it a lot so that I got mm -hmm. used to the mechanics. So then I got and into the story more. Yeah. yeah. It's just interesting, which I feel like is also the case for any video game that's not VR. Like, for the not gaming public, like, I think my mom, if she were to pick up, like, Star Wars Jedi Survivor or something like that, she would not mm. be paying attention to the story. She'd be so focused on, like, what buttons do I push to move? Like, she, I think it's the same thing. It's just there's different levels of, like, how used 
to like video gaming and that style yeah. of mechanics. It's, it's, you are. it's weird to think about. It's like a symbiotic like relationship, I guess, with like the interface in a way. It's like because again, like for example, you and I are so used to like controller, keyboard, and for me, like headsets, right? Like yeah, I'm just used to it, you know. Whereas when it comes to like other people, it's just like. Again, like again with your mom analogy, like she doesn't have that like symbiotic, like she doesn't have that natural yeah. sense to that, right? So it's kind of that's fun. also the it's, case. It's a good comparison with like when you're picking up like a new program or something. Like when I first started in yeah. Photoshop, even now I'm not like an expert, but like when I first started out, I did not know how to like import an image, so I was just on YouTube, and like the biggest hurdle for me was like learning the program. I guess Premiere would be a better example. Like when I first started yeah. Premiere, I had no idea how to use it, so my biggest hurdle was like just learning how to use it i was not doing anything creatively i was just learning mechanics but once the mechanics became like an extension of me because i just did it over and over again i then was able to dive into the possibilities and be more creative with my editing and stuff like that on yeah. certain projects and i think i guess it's the same way with video games which is just, i i think makes sense when i say it. it's just interesting because i've never really thought about it that way yeah well no i like i definitely have in that sense but i think of it more in the classroom like whenever i teach because it's more mm -hmm. like uh, you got to get through the technical problem solving before you can get to the creative problem solving. Yeah, which sucks because like, you want to do the creative stuff first. Like it's so. Yeah. Like I remember when I first started like After Effects and Premiere, I was just like, I have so many ideas, but I do not know how to execute them. And it's execute. Yeah. And it's and it's honestly like a challenge. I think that's why a lot of people quit is because it can be so demoralizing just getting over that learning curve for any program before you start getting the creative fulfillment once you know it well enough like that learning curve is just so annoying that sometimes people don't persist to get to the point where they can execute on their visions and i i'm yeah. even a culprit of that on certain programs like i feel like i've i had the drive and learned for premiere and after effects and even photoshop and illustrator a bit but like i want to get more into 3d programs but like the learning curve is steep and i need to persist past that this is like a therapy session for me when i jump into blender <laughs> And figure it out <laughs> yeah you say that you say that you you want to jump into blender then the second you do you're like okay what are the hotkeys for anything <laughs> i know that well i was i did get pretty good at blender back in the blue butter bagel days like we i did these like mini minecraft animations to like show off our teams like i would import oh yeah like, yeah yeah I these raked that. characters in and actually do like mini animations and uh i was really proud of those um I did like yeah. learn how to import an environment, but like I had again these crazy ideas, and I what came out was just like a super diluted version of it because I didn't know how to execute everything that I wanted to. But yeah, this is like a huge tangent. Like this kind of podcast is all over the place, but uh, I kind of want to wrap it up a little early because we're recording a little late, so I want to be able to yeah. edit things. Um, do you have any last minute thoughts on like VR and storytelling that you wanted to? highlight or talk about things you're excited about with the future i mean for the future again i'm excited to see well short term again is it's going to be like seeing how other studios continue with stylization and and uh really embark on how to give new unique experiences yeah you know? long term i'm excited to see like this, the technology grow and something that can potentially even ask us like hey how do we experience things like questions like that that can like really change about like how how we interact and are a part of these stories, you know. Yeah. Uh, and finally, I, I it was like a final note just just to talk about like games and stuff like that. I think it's really funny to think about like I want to say like skill level, but also just like how how used to how people are to different like mechanics in a way when it comes to tangential games. Like from I'm thinking like Call of Duty to say like a game like Pavlov or Contractors in VR, right? Uh huh. Uh, because there's so many people that like ju like swap over to that in VR, and they're like, "It's absolute dog, absolute dog water." And it's funny because like to me, it's like second nature to like check every corner, you know, like make sure I'm clear and stuff like that. I'm just using this as an analogy, right? Because it's like just watching how how people think and how they do things in VR. Funnily enough, kind of validates how some NPCs are in other really? games. Because yeah, because like they never look up or like they they like. You know what okay. I mean? Stuff like that. Interesting. They're, like, like they're, they're kind of like still trying to like figure things out in a way. So it's, it's yeah. just funny to see how that kind of translates to in VR. How you can like actually see how people will interact with the world, uh, like in a, again a more immersive way. Yeah. All right. Um, are you ready for patient shoutouts? Uh, yeah, hit me with them. Q 
Cue the Abbey music. Pushka, Bitch, and Lori, Frank, Rick, Lisa, Evan, Tony. Thank you so much for pledging the tier. Thank you see the shout out. If you like to support us over on Patreon, link is down in the description. You get the audio episode early, special by physical works, all that jazz, and more. Thank you seriously, sincerely for Patreon supporters. Um, are you ready for cool comments? Yeah, hit me with them. We got so, this up. On our last week's episode, the irrefutable dessert tier list, which was part two of our dessert tier list mm. thing with Evan. Uh, speaking of my mom, which we talked about earlier, my mom commented. She said, love the discord between everyone. Hysterical on, to- on the topic of welcome candy. Never put out unwrapped candy. Think about how many people are touching that opened candy with like a sick bleh face emoji. That is um, fair. Which is a very fair point because we were talking about like jelly. Evan was like jelly beans, the perfect thing. So th- that's right, Evan. Another t- reason why jelly beans suck. We should well, drop it down another thing. letter. My mom usually has out like little Hershey kisses. Yeah, that's what I. Th- I think it's I like said. Perfect. I agreed with you. Like Hers- I think I said Hershey kisses, and you were like, no, peanut M and M's or something like that. Well, um, uh, yeah, I prefer good peanut M and M. But I'm also thinking about like at home. Like if I'm at home, I'm gonna do that. If I'm going out somewhere, I, yeah, Hershey kisses. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And there's also Hershey kisses with like different like, uh. This flavors. That's my flavor motion. That's me wiggling my hand. fingers around. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Imagine you know when you're in a bar or something, or just like at a fight, like in movies, where they're like, "This is like pain and like danger." It's like this is flavor. <laughs> this hand. <laughs> Name in my fists. All right. Um, and then Josh McIntyre. This is flavor. This is flavor. Oh. <laughs> uh, Josh McIntyre also commented on that. Uh, they said. Because on the last one, they agreed with everything that Evan said, basically. And we asked at the end of this one, like, does Evan, uh, do you agree with Evan? And Josh said, Evan let me down on this one. Jelly beans are S tier for me. Josh. Uh, Mm. But half the other candies and chocolates you mentioned I've never had before. Love the episode. The food content is amazing. Thank you, Josh. Really appreciate it. You know, we got to do some one of these times. We got to have a time where we do like a food tasting thing. I know. That can be on our secret project thing. Like we get like a whole thing. That we were talking like about. Like McDonald's thing. I saw like, like a I mukbang. Think it was and somebody else. Yeah. It doesn't even be a mukbang technically, but like we don't need to be like, well, this is a mukbang. Don't they have like ASMR in the mic or whatever? Isn't that what goes no, on? No. That, that, not all of them. What mukbangs are you listening to? Is it the, I thought mukbangs were the ones you get like a whole bunch of food and you eat it and, and then you like, eat the, it. You, like they, No, you like, eat it and you like, like the, the ones mic. I listen to, you ask questions to each other and like just talk like you're having a meal. Like basically oh, a podcast with food. Oh. That's the ones I'm I listen to. I, don't I, know what I you're think I'm thinking to. of like Nick Accato or whatever the ones that uh, he did. Where, or it's just know. like, I don't know. I never even watched them. I just saw little clips and because it's just weird watching people eat like that. Yeah. Mind. But if it's people right. talking about it, then that's 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 what I like to do. Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready for the introduction? Yeah. Tell me when. When. We just talk about what we want to talk about, and now we're done. <laughs> Thank you seriously so much to everyone. We really, really appreciate you listening. Uh, let us know down below your favorite stories in video games and VR games, if you've played any, what your favorite like VR games are, or story VR games. We would love to hear them, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, thanks for listening. We'll be back next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.